I am super excited to share a conversation I had with Chrysantilus. She is a popular YouTuber and TikToker from Baltimore, Maryland, and she helps people demystify psychedelics, prepare for trips, and is a really a strong advocate for getting to know the lineage of the sacred medicine that you're sitting with. She is also hilarious. She is a budding comedian and actor and her videos on YouTube are what pulled me in. So I was super thrilled to sit down and have this conversation. I hope that you will enjoy it and I hope that you will support her by getting her new book, Going on a Trip, to help you integrate your psychedelic journeys as well as supporting her on Patreon. Enjoy this conversation with Chris Antilus. It's time to upgrade your life. In this podcast and our live events and retreats, we explore ways to hack enlightenment by integrating ancient wisdom and modern neuroscience with transpersonal psychology. From plant medicine and psychedelics to breathwork, mindfulness, and neurofeedback, my guests and I will shine a light on the unique capacity that we have to use our conscious mind to evolve individually and collectively as a species. Tune in each week on your favorite podcast player or the Pennington Media YouTube channel for interviews and discussions about holistic healing of trauma and adverse childhood experiences, burnout recovery, and intentional wellness. Chrysantilus, it is so wonderful to have you on the Conscious Evolution Podcast. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Well, this is a rare treat for me. I'm, I'm super excited. I've been fangirling, watching all your videos on YouTube. I support you on Patreon and yes. I yes. am obsessed. I love your content. Thank you so much. That means the world. I, I love your content as well. <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, I feel like I come from the serious side of the psychedelic space and you come from the silly side. Not that all of your stuff is, is all comedy. You've certainly done some really great in-depth things that, that educate and inform, but I love that you can take the lighter side and, and still bless us with insights. So I would love to hear at, at such a, a tender age, how did you get into the psychedelic space and what made you commit to becoming a YouTuber in this space? Absolutely. Well, I would like to start off with um, expressing my thanks to you for having me on, expressing thanks to the medicine, because I know we're going to talk about the medicine, the medicine spirits, ancestors, and the land. Um, I am a bit about my origin story. Right now, I have been living in uh, Piscataway territory or what's known as the city of Baltimore for about eight years. And I'm from this area. Um, I do have indigenous uh, and black lineages. So just like a shout out and thanks to the ancestors and my lineage right quick. Um, my origin story, well, I grew up in Silver Spring, Maryland, which is right next to DC for anyone who is um, unfamiliar. And I, when I grew up, I. I never really heard much about sacred earth medicines. Um, I actually, through high school, was pretty Christian and involved in Christianity. And because of that, I viewed psychedelics, sacred earth medicines through a very kind of like demonized lens. I had absolutely no interest in, in them until I was in college. Um, I even did a report in high school on the evils of magic mushrooms and the dangers of magic mushrooms in health class. And it was so funny because I remember not actually being able to find anything and having to basically like BS that entire report. Um, so essentially, I, similar to Charlotte, I know she talked about this in her interview. I, I went to Quaker school too uh, in middle school. And that was a very mind expanding experience. It got me into mindfulness. You know, we do meeting for worship. Um, and then in college, I started to take that and start a meditation practice. And I also tried cannabis for the first time, which I was very against. 
up until like maybe my last semester um or yeah my freshman year I was like very very against cannabis and then my friends were like get over yourself and try it and once I was like okay this this isn't the devil this isn't so bad um it expanded my mind to start trying mushrooms and when I tried mushrooms that's really when there was a shift for me for the first time that alcohol is somehow legal and a bunch of people are out getting drunk at bars right now but this like you're telling me this is a mushroom like this is a mushroom and it absolutely blew my mind and i i completely fell in love with the medicine i said i need to learn about the lineage i need to do some deep dives here because there's so much more here and um I did start doing YouTube in college, but I was always way too afraid to talk about magic mushrooms because the way that the Baltimore Police Department operates, it's like I would be setting myself up for a plant or something. I was just really, really paranoid about the possibility of uh, like loss of liberty, loss of freedom if I started speaking out about the medicine. And it took maybe a couple years being out of college and completely having a bunch of shifts going to burning man twice and finally getting permission from the medicine to share my story working with the medicine enough knowing enough about the lineage of the medicine and uh having community and i think that that was the biggest shift for me was that i had a community who was here to support me who was here to say uh you're safe in sharing your story. And it's been so beautifully received on YouTube, especially. I have a TikTok, but as a black person, you can't really talk about psychedelics on TikTok, which is really rough uh, because I have many beautiful counterparts who are able to talk about their plant medicine stories there. But when I do, the videos get taken down. So I have been able to talk about this on my YouTube and uh, even on my Instagram. Uh, and podcasts like this one that I'm so grateful to be on today. So yeah, that is pretty much my story. I have been working on finding my purpose through giving back. And my entire approach with my YouTube channel is a harm reductive perspective for mushrooms and sacred earth medicines. Uh, a lot of millennials and Gen Z come to me never having heard about psychedelics or Burning Man or anything like this. And actually a lot of folks who have heard of that stuff have just been given them and they don't know what to do. They haven't been given instructions. They don't know about set and setting. So for me, I just want to make sure that everyone can have a safe time in their healing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also know the lineage. That's a huge emphasis on my channel is before we like dive into this pool, like let's know who Maria Sabina is. Let's know where Oaxaca, Mexico is. Let's like trace the roots and like speak these names. I love it. I love it. Drop in knowledge as well. And it's hilarious. Um, I, I spent 11, almost 12 years in Silver Spring, Maryland after oh, I did wow. my, yeah, I did my, um, my residency at Georgetown Hospital and, and lived in Silver Spring and operated a wellness center there. And if only your health teacher could see you now. I know. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Hello, hello, beautiful soul. Would you like to connect with me and a team of amazing healers and medicine people? Well, we are coming to a city or country near you. You can click on the link in the description of this video or this podcast so that you can find out about the Conscious Evolution Retreats that I am hosting in various countries with my dear friends and medicine people, Dr. Jill Stocker and John Jacob Mubarak. Some are including sacred plant medicine and some are with breathwork and meditation. No matter where we are, we are always bringing our hearts of compassion to help you heal and evolve and thrive. So if you're curious, if you're interested, if you want to get on the wait list or just be notified, click on the link and I will share the information on our upcoming retreats. Just as a highlight, I will be hosting with John Jacob Mubarak 
in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, a sacred mushroom retreat that also includes breath work if you don't want to take mushrooms so that you can expand your consciousness. John Jacob is the founder of Sacred Truth Tours. You can check out one of our podcasts together to learn about how his principles so fully aligned with my conscious evolution principles. So this will be a wonderful facilitated retreat in a sacred space where you can bust out and evolve. I will also be sitting in a sacred ceremony with Dr. Jill Stocker. We are returning to Omega Institute. This one is for women only. This is about reclaiming your feminine power, healing womb trauma, and really stepping into your divine feminine expression. I will also be doing a solo retreat at Omega Institute in the summer that's all about self-love and resilience. I will be including breathwork, meditation, and mindfulness practices that allow you to really tune in, heal, and nurture real self-love and resilience. And if you want to pop on over to Europe, I will also be facilitating a magic truffle retreat in Amsterdam. So if any of this appeals to you, please do click on the link where you can get more information and be added to a list to be informed about our upcoming retreats and events. I look forward to seeing you. So for you, when you say that you had these experiences first with cannabis and then with psilocybin mushrooms, and it just opened up your mind, blew your mind, were you in need of healing or was it just this self-discovery journey that started with the Quaker school and the mindfulness and then the meditation, did this just deepen your practice or was there some healing that needed to take place? Yes, I would say, especially as a black queer woman growing up in the United States, I needed healing then and still actively need healing now. Um, I had and have a lot of my religious upbringing that has affected me in certain ways that I'm still working to unlearn everything from sexuality, you know, to the ability to explore with medicines, to uh, choosing a path that's very unconventional. Uh, a lot of my upbringing I've had to deprogram from, and I'm still working on that. Uh, it could even be things that are subconscious. So I definitely was in need of healing then. Um, I have been diagnosed with anxiety and depression, and we talk about diagnoses. I know you, Dr. Pennington, have spoken about that a lot of the times is just a symptom of an underlying thing. Do you know what I mean? And for me, it's it could be a lifelong journey of figuring out what that underlying thing is, but the medicine has been an incredible tool for that. Mm, I'm so glad yeah. to hear it. So glad to hear it. Absolutely. I think for all of us who are BIPOC or somewhere on the LGBTQI plus rainbow, two-spirit people, we have a lot of things hidden in our subconscious mind from our programming, from our family, from our religions, from society. And I find that these, these allies, these sacred teachers have been probably the most pivotal thing for me. Um, treating trauma for all these years and then uncovering my own trauma. So we've talked about mushrooms. We've talked about uh, cannabis a little bit. Are there other sacred teachers that you have experienced or explored? Yes, there are. Um, let's see. Most recently, I was able to sit in ceremony uh, with the Ancestor Project for Combo, which was very, very beautiful. And I highly recommend anybody, especially in the DMV, uh, but they travel a lot to sit in ceremony with them for combo. Um, and that is the medicine of the giant leaf frog. Um, I had gates on my legs. I ended up actually getting around 14 gates for the first time, which I didn't know was possible. <laughs> I thought I'd only be getting three or four, but I had a lot that I had to purge. Uh, I had a very challenging experience last year that I talked to Charlotte and Dre about, and they were very much like, combo is coming through for us. Like, you know what I mean? Let's consider sitting with combo. And um, 
it was an extremely clarifying and cleansing experience. Um, I've also sat with uh, Bufo, also known as 5-MeO-DMT, um, Peyote, also known as Hikuri, and those all of those medicines I have worked on cultivating individual relationships with all of them and not just kind of like throwing them into the pot of psychedelics or like getting my Girl Scout badge. Um, it's like a continued ongoing relationship to serve the medicine and live my life in a way that the medicine can be proud. Mm, I love that. So what was your Bufo experience like? That's one of them that has not called to me as yet. So I'm, I'm curious. Um, let's see, my Bufo experience. It was, to me, the purest expression of love that I've ever felt. I went to a place that has been described as white light. And... I actually sat with synthetic bufo because real bufo uh, is cruel to animals and there's no uh, chemical difference between real bufo and synthetic bufo. So I said, synthetic bufo, I'm there. Um, it was the purest expression of love I've ever felt. And I remember speaking to my mother after the ceremony and just telling her the level of love that I felt and it was love for myself. It, it brought me to tears. It was love that I didn't know was there and love that I had been especially disconnected from in my challenging experience. And I remember explaining it to her as the only type of level of love that I can think that this is is the type of love that I hear about when a mother or a first time parent is handed their baby for the first time, except I'm feeling that for myself. I feel like I'm being handed to myself for the first time. So that is what Bufo was like for me. And I absolutely love 5-MeO-DMT. I've only sat with it once, but I would love to sit with it again. Uh, and continue to reconnect with that amount of self-love. Mm, I love that. That sounds really powerful. And mm. so you mentioned your mother, like what does your family think of you all over YouTube and TikTok and Instagram talking about these very personal and for some people in some states, these things are illegal. So very, what do yeah. you think? That's a great question. Um, at first, when I told my family that I was sitting with these sacred earth medicines, there was a certain level of concern because especially in the black community, we just don't know. It's, it's such an unknown. And I think that if we do know about it, we think about it as some quote, white people shit, right? And so, for me, a certain amount of like my giving education to people, including my family, is that this is actually the opposite of some white people shit. This is some shit that was taken away from us that we have the choice to reclaim in our search for healing. And now I have certain family members, I won't out them here, uh, who are actively asking me like, oh, I want to do uh, mushrooms. I want to sit with this, I want to sit with that. I'd like to microdose. And I've actually started to be able to provide some of my family members with uh, microdosing capsules that I make. And that's been a really beautiful shift to see in them. Uh, but yeah, fortunately, my family has been by and large supportive of what I talk about. And if they actively aren't looking to do it, they're at least like genuinely interested. Well, I'm, I'm happy to hear that. That sounds good for you. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm also curious. So you, a lot of your content is harm reduction. It's education, but a lot of it is so, so, so fun. It's just, you're fun to watch. Tell me about the Ho Rogan experience. Oh, yes. The Where did that inspiration experience. come from? <laughs> 
So this is a, the Ho Rogan experience is a series that I wish I could put it out on a weekly basis because it is really from my heart and from my soul. Um, Joe Rogan is the biggest podcaster right now in the U S and I remember thinking that like, wow, the only people that I am seeing parodying Joe Rogan come from his exact lived experience. And like, wouldn't it be great to see like a bimbo Joe Rogan, a spiritual festival girl, Joe Rogan. So that is where the idea of the Ho Rogan experience was birthed from. And my first episode I did was an interview with Candace Owens, where I, as the editor, writer of it, I challenged myself to try to find common ground with Candace Owens, which I think I might have done twice, maybe like in two of the clips out of like six or eight of the clips of the show. But um, a lot of the conversations on Joe Rogan are conversations that need to be had. Um, so for me, it's like, how do I flip the script and keep it funny, uh, but also add like a little sprinkle of like my thoughts and like my lived experiences into them? Uh, because there aren't too many people who look like me or come from my background who are asked to be on the Joe Rogan experience. So it really is like me inserting myself into that podcast. <laughs> well, I hope that it, it gets to him and that he does have you on. Like, <laughs> wouldn't that be fun? Wouldn't that be trippy? I always think about that. Like if he ever asked me to come on, if I did more episodes and then it's like, I would definitely want to come on, but I also would probably be excommunicated by like half of my community. <laughs> um, I'd have to do something that was like very interruptive to his podcast, like bring on three activists with me and like give like 15 minutes of my time to them. Or, you know, I, I'd have to be like very, very in intentional mm -hmm. with that if I was ever given that platform. Yeah, I could see that happening. Absolutely. I have friends who have been on his show, so I know it's not impossible. Yeah. Exactly. I am calling for some new authors for one of our group anthologies called Sacred Medicine. We are calling for authors of all kinds all around the world who have stories to share about psychedelic assisted therapy, psychedelic medicine, sitting in ceremony with combo, bufo, 5-MeO-DMT, ayahuasca, psilocybin mushrooms, mescaline, peyote, you name it, we want to hear about it. And in particular, we are publishing stories of good and challenging trips because I really want people to understand the, the breadth and the depth of experiences that can come when sitting with psychedelic medicine. I personally have been helped so much in my own healing journey, and I'm now sitting in ceremony with clients, and I know that people need more information on what is safe, what's not, what's to be expected, and what might catch you off guard. So if this sounds like a book that you want to be a part of, then please click the link in the description or in my bio so that you can share your story or your concept totally free. We at Make Your Mark Global do all of the heavy lifting, the editing, the formatting, getting the book globally distributed on Amazon and other book retailers, and you retain 100% copyright for your story. We are really looking forward to bringing this book out to the world in 2023. So share this video or the link with other people that you know who want to be featured in a book about sacred medicine. I look forward to reading your story. So shifting gears a little bit, um, we talked a little bit about preparation and integration. It's really great for people to demystify some of the psychedelic experiences, which you've done great in your videos. But the next level is how do you integrate this? How do you make your life into a ceremony as, as Dre from the Ancestor Project says? You know, how do we really take the mind blowing experiences and not just chase after the next one, but allow it the time to land. And I know that part of what you're doing, mm -hmm. we can see sitting behind you there that you have got your very first book 
out into yes. the world. And this is going to be part of a series where you're going to be helping people to get things onto paper. So tell me about going on a trip. So going on a trip is a mind body journal that I have written for folks for integration, whether that be sacred earth medicine integration, holotropic breathwork integration, integrating a vacation, any kind of integration you can do for a mind body practice, going on a trip is for you. Um, so yeah, this is a companion tool because I realized that I didn't really have a journal that I could write in with prompts and something to support me after I journeyed. And I also talk about this on my channel a lot, but integration is definitely the realm within psychedelics that I can grow the most because I feel like I do great advocacy work. I do great harm reduction work, but taking time for yourself to integrate what you've learned is a whole other level. And it can be something like with sitting with magic mushrooms, you know what I mean? Not craving sugar for the next week. And that's like magic. Wow, my sugar addiction is cured. But then it's like the week after that and the week after that, are you still going to be able to challenge yourself to respect that lesson? Or are you just going to revert back to your pre-trip, your pre-journey self? Um, so yeah, this book, is the first of a few books it look reversed um but it also has a place to sketch and draw symbols and there's a place for rating for everything from like focus insight peace of mind your body feels and connection to spirit stuff like that so this is a, a comprehensive tool for integration uh but Practical advice I have for folks integrating is to wait at least two weeks between journeying, especially if you're sitting with psychedelics that affect your serotonin uh, ceiling. Stuff like um, medicines like magic mushroom will mess up your serotonin ceiling if you try to sit with them every other day uh, too often. So give yourself that time, give yourself time to integrate. and challenge yourself to have a solid weeks a solid two weeks of mental health prior to journeying that's another way to have a sustainable practice it can be very hard for those of us with anxiety and depression because there's a chance we only get four weeks in a year and i understand that um however i think having a sustainable practice is a great way to integrate because you have a front end and back end to your practice where everything is working cohesively together, get that set and setting right, do your research on the lineage. And I think another great way to integrate and possibly one of the best ways to integrate is through community. So that's sharing your experience, listening to the experiences of others. Uh, the Ancestor Project has a wonderful BIPOC integrative circle that I have attended multiple times and I absolutely love for folks all around the world to share their experiences. And um, certain communities like Baltimore have a uh, local psychedelic society. So there's a Baltimore psychedelic society that has an integration circle where you can meet up with locals or Zoom with locals and share your story. So I think that, yeah, connecting to community is another like key piece of the integration puzzle that I am just like now tapping into even after having sat with psychedelic medicines for like going on 10 years. Mm. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think community has been so key for me. I've just been blessed that many of the mental health providers and doctors and medicine people that I hang with, we've had our own integration circles. Um, so, so important, the community aspect, because I find that if you just are off and isolated, you can often even question, like, was that trip really that meaningful? Or I could just, yeah. I could just say, oh, well, I was just on a hallucinogen. How do I know that that vision is meant to be my new reality and what, whatnot? Yeah. Or you could have a very challenging experience and not be able to see the silver linings of it. 
Whereas if I talk to somebody like Dre, he's going to be able to point out to me exactly why a challenging trip could have been a needed trip for me. Um, and Charlotte and Dre have both been just incredible supports, like, and friends in my integration journey and my journey with medicines. Yeah. Yeah. You're very blessed to be there amongst them. So, and, and I love the video that you did uh, with them. Oh yeah. We have a, a Rafe slash Hoppe series. If you uh, go to my YouTube channel, Chrysantilis, you can find it. It's a four part series all about the sacred earth medicine Rafe, which is made of sacred tobacco. We talk about grandfather medicine, the lineage of Rafe. And that's also a medicine that I work with on a like biweekly to monthly basis. Awesome. Well, I, I enjoyed that. And it was thanks to hearing from Charlotte and Dre that I finally opened up to have my first Pape experience when I was in Costa Rica last week, because I had previously <laughs> had all of these fears that it was going to like activate my asthma. And it was hearing from, from them that no, that this has helped a lot of people clear it. So that was a great, that was a great series. So it's really strange how it doesn't activate that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So congratulations on the book. I want people to get a hold of this journal going on a trip by Chrysantilis. You can check it out on Amazon and stay tuned for more journals that are going to be coming soon. So you mentioned some of the, the censorship, which, you know, we could go on and on about black folks being censured on social media. But one of the things that you told me that you are thriving on mm -hmm. the dream talk. So TikTok yeah. and talking about lucid dreaming seems to be taking off for you. Has lucid dreaming always been a part of your, your mindfulness and spiritual practice, or did that come as a result of psychedelic use? Lucid dreaming has been a practice that I have had prior to psychedelic use. Um, I have been able to lucid dream back into I, i'm thinking like for most of my life that i can remember and i started having experiences with sleep paralysis in high school and i have some kind of undiagnosed sleep condition that includes hypnopompic and hypnagogic hallucinations and all of that kind of intermingles with my lucid dreaming in a way that is apparently interesting to people on TikTok. And so while I can't talk about psychedelics and sacred earth medicines on TikTok, I can talk about dreams without getting deplatformed. So that is sort of where my TikTok has gone. And it is also a really beautiful way to introduce people to different herbs and roots for the first time because folks want to know what allies can help them, what plant allies can help them to lucid dream. So this week I was talking about everything from Damiana, mugwort, catnip to uh, a tea that I sit with, which is Mexican dream root tea, which is a very powerful ally to lucid dreaming. So it is sort of, I want to say like psychedelics light or like psychedelics junior, if that makes sense. Um, it's what I can talk about without having, and it's funny because I say without having to worry about getting banned, but I actually have even gotten my lucid dream videos taken down for drugs and regulated substances. So it's really like they just like see my face and my hairstyle. And fortunately, when I appeal that it gets restored, the content gets restored. But it is it is a challenge. Yeah, it, it takes a lot of patience. Mm, indeed. Yeah. It's very frustrating, but I'm glad that you're finding your, your ways around it. And yeah. for those that do find you and love your content, they can go deeper by supporting you on Patreon. So tell us a little yeah. bit about what are the bonuses that we get as a supporter on Patreon? So I recently released a video last week that is an in-depth tier tour of the perks that come with each tier. But uh, starting at the most cost effective tier, you will get access to pictures, reels, exclusive posts, and a lot of BTS content. So I essentially make BTS videos that show you the behind the scenes of my one woman operation. 
And with the higher tiers, there are exclusive merch options, um, whether that be stickers, mugs, hoodies, tote bags. And uh, then at the highest levels, at the gifting tiers, it is a seasonal gift from Chris Antelis. So right now we have one mug, two totes, and a hoodie. And it is, it's just like a fun way to support me, a fun way to get merch. And I think it is something that I didn't know that I was at the point of being able to ask for. So it's also something that I encourage other creators, even if you think you have a really small YouTube channel, even if you think you have a very small operation, um, me, myself, I have eight or nine patrons right now supporting me and that means the world you included dr pennington and uh it's just an incredible way to keep myself afloat uh in addition to like youtube revenue and all that kind of stuff it's very small for where i'm at right now so yeah patreon is beautiful and amazing small but growing growing and growing yes well, Chrysantilis, this has been such a joy to connect with you. And I, I can't wait to see how the rest of your, your career, your life unfolds. You know, you're, you're up to so many good things already. And I know it can only keep growing from here. So thank you again for joining us. Yes, thank you so much for having me. And if the next, when the next book is ready to drop, please let me know and we'll bring you back on. Absolutely. Yeah, I would be happy to do that. Awesome. So there you have it, my friends, this beautiful TikToker, YouTuber dropping knowledge on harm reduction and psychedelic preparation and integration and advocacy. Check her out, Chrysantilis. She's also got a website and Patreon. All of the links are below this video and in the description. So please do support her. Until next time, be well and be safe. Thank you so much. You too. You're welcome. Bye. Peace. Thank you for tuning in to the Conscious Evolution Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with a friend, subscribe, and leave us a review and rating on your favorite podcast player. This helps us get the content out to a larger audience. And to watch the video version of the podcast, visit the Pennington Media YouTube channel. Want more info on how psychedelics may improve your mental well-being? How to choose a retreat? Or what to look for in a shaman? get on the Psychedelic Curious email journal. The link is in the show notes and on my website, andreapennington.com. You can also sign up for my free masterclass series, where each month I take a deep dive into a topic in holistic healing, trauma recovery, self-love, resilience, and psychedelic-assisted therapy.